welcome to The Hive Podcast, a show that helps inspire you to pursue your passions and ambitions. My name is Jared Spink and I'm your host. I'm a photographer, videographer, and entrepreneur. Join me as I sit down with other entrepreneurs and creators to learn more about their process, how they built communities around their brands, and the experiences they've had along the way. I hope that these conversations inspire you to pursue your goals. You're listening to The Hive Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hive Podcast. As always, I am excited for this week's guest and I'm happy that you guys are here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. However you're consuming the content, I'm happy you're here. So this week's guest is a amazing wildlife photographer. I'm super stoked to have him on. I think we we can all learn a lot about photography from this guest. So let's welcome Josh Brown to the show. Josh, how you doing, man? Doing great, Jared. How you doing, brother? Good, good. Happy we finally got to connect. We've been messaging each other for quite a while off and on on Instagram and we were able to schedule time to to get you on and I'm I'm happy that I'm happy that you're here. Thank you for coming well, on. I appreciate it, man. You're you're very accommodating and that's uh I know I'm over here in this mountain states, but uh so thank you for making it a little later for me. Much yeah, appreciated. No- no worries. No worries, man. Happy to have you on. Um, for the guests that don't know you, and I, I mean, I'm only really familiar with your Instagram account, which is absolutely yeah. beautiful. So that'll be linked down <laughs> below for anybody that wants to check it out in the description of the video, the show notes. Yeah. Just amazing wildlife photography, right? Uh, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I've been at it for uh, for quite some time now, 2013. So however many years that is, nine or something like that. I never was good at math, but, uh, yeah, I picked up a point and shoot camera back then and, uh, just continually started upgrading. And you know, the thing with photography, man, enough is never enough. You, uh, once you kind of get bit by the bug, you just got to keep diving deep down into it. And, uh, I think I'm about as deep as anybody can get, um, went straight into bird photography, which is probably not the easiest genre to be in, but, uh, I love it. I'm passionate about wildlife, passionate about birds, and I just wanted to share with everybody what was happening out there. So let's, oh, my wrong screen. Where are we at? Here we go. All right. That's, that's the fun stuff of actually doing the live recordings, guys. So I'm um, glad you're doing it on your end. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you're, you've been doing something. You still make mistakes occasionally. Um, so wildlife photography, what got you into wildlife photography? Because, you know, when the photography bug bites you, there's so many directions mm-hmm. to go and you, you start dabbling in everything. So what made you I, I, settle on wildlife and, and birds in particular? Well, I, I mean, I'm a self-proclaimed bird nerd. Uh, I think, goodness, since I was 21, 21 years old or so, uh, my wife and I started doing uh, just bird watching. All we could afford is a pair of cheap $90 um, binoculars. And we went everywhere trying to identify birds. And, uh, you know, eventually... 15 years later, well, let's see, I was 35 when I got my first camera, 37, something like that. Uh, My wife made the comment. She said, I wish I could just press a button on these binoculars and and take a picture of the birds. I said, you know, that's called a camera. We're going to have to upgrade. So uh, we got the camera and, and, and it was just a, it was a natural progression. You know, after a while you get tired of telling everybody what you see and you want to show people what you see and no better way to do that than a 600 millimeter F4 and a big old Nikon. So, so yeah, it's, it's the natural progression. You just, you, you get a little more money, you get a little more time and the, the passion grows. That's really what it comes down to. That's how long have you been doing it? Uh, so 2013 for photography. So that's nine years. And, and since I was 20, I said 46 now. So what is that? Yeah. A long time, 20 plus years bird watching. So it's been my whole life. It's been part of my life. That's great. It's it's awesome that you were able to take your your interest in it and kind of turn it into what it is now with your Instagram account and your YouTube account. Um, walk me through the progression of starting to get into wildlife photography because I'm absolutely fina- fa- uh, fascinated with it. I think I think it's such a cool art form, uh, such a cool like aspect of photography. And I'm used to like doing real estate, right, which is completely yeah, different. Yeah. So kind of walk me through some of the stuff that you have to deal with as a wildlife photographer because every type of photography has, has its challenges, right? So I have my challenges with real estate, but Absolutely. your challenges, what you face have to be completely different. Kind of walk me through like a day in the life of going out and, and shooting. Yeah. 
So, uh, so you know how if you schedule an appointment with someone, they show up and you uh, you <laughs> photograph them. The house is there when you get there. Um, <laughs> you know, if you've got a subject or a family you're photographing, it's all you know. Put it on your calendar, and you guys meet up at the right time. You know, with wildlife photography, and I don't want to oversimplify it, but that's not the case, right? I mean, you're you're constantly hunting, you're taking notes of everywhere you go. Um, it's man, it's work. Honestly, I picked. Uh, sometimes I feel like I picked the craziest, most expensive, most difficult genre of photography because it takes so much of your time. You're out there looking all the time and, and there's a lot of failure involved. I'm going to be real. I mean, you, you know, there's, there's going out there expecting something to happen and nothing happens. And then on other days when you go out and you don't expect much and everything happens. So it, listen, when it comes to figuring out how to do it. It's just time and effort. I tell that to everybody. There's nothing I can tell you. There's nothing, anyone, anything you can learn on YouTube that's going to replace time and effort. You've just got to put in the time. You got to get familiar with your, your area. You've got to get familiar with your camera settings. And more importantly, you've got to get familiar with your subjects. So the progression is uh, wing it for the first year, take a picture of everything you see from caterpillars to cardinals. And, um, and then just try to get better, man. Just try to get better and, and figure it out. I don't know if that answers your question, but I'm telling you, it's not, it's not easy. It's definitely something that takes a lot of time and effort. Yeah. I mean, it, it has to take so much patience to be able to get the shots that yeah. you get. And I mean, has there, there's gotta be times where you go out and you co- you come back with nothing, right? Yeah. It, you know, this week, my YouTube video is, um, it's going to be called, uh, well, I haven't quite picked the thumbnail yet, but it's going to be about time, right? You know, spending time out in the field and and really allocating the right time to the right activity. And, you know, I've got a 40 hour a week job. I've got a career that I've been at for 16 years now. I, I can't give that up for my YouTube channel. YouTube's doing great, but I don't see it replacing, you know, a, a career I've been at forever. So my weekends and the time I have after work, I have to be very strategic. And just this Saturday, I, you know, I get to a spot, I make myself a blind and I'm waiting for one specific bird to land on a limb. And after about two and a half, three hours, I'm like, man, do I, I don't have time to spend my weekend like this, right? I've got to get out there. I've got to make content and I've kind of transitioned from being just a photographer to now doing the YouTube channel. So now I'm not only just getting a picture of a bird, I've got to get the footage of how it's happening. I've got to get B-roll. I've got to, you know, I got to get the video of the birds plus the the pictures of the birds. It's consuming. It's absolutely consuming. And, and that's another thing, you know, the progression you talk about progressing as I was posting all these images on Instagram and I, you know, I got a pretty decent following on Instagram. I started realizing it just doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't, it doesn't let you know that I laid out in the dirt for two and a half hours and I got dirt in my pockets and, and I had to clean my camera for, you know, for 30 minutes after the the whole thing was over. It doesn't tell the whole story about the misses and the emotional stress that goes behind it. So that's why YouTube came about. And, and I try to touch on that in YouTube more than just talking about gear, more than just talking about technique. It's about the emotional connection to this activity and, and to this hobby. That's great. So yeah, that you're-, you're not always successful. Yeah, that's great that you're doing that because if you just look at your Instagram account, you're like, oh man, he's, Josh yeah. is just snapping banners every time he goes out. Like these, <laughs> these just look so, so good. Um, but there's so much more work behind it. And I, like yeah. you said, probably like hours of just laying in the dirt, trying to get, get the right shot, the right, the right, yeah. just set up in the right moment to capture what you're capturing. Um, so now that's you started, right. you started a YouTube channel that goes into depth. When did you start the YouTube channel? Yeah, I've only been at it for nine months. November made nine months, so I'm going into my 10th month. Um, I started off kind of aggressive. I did two videos a week just because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I had to figure it out, right? Had to make as, as many mistakes as I could right up front. Um, and I did. I made a lot of mistakes. I corrected them. And uh, I guess about four months into it, I started narrowing it down to once a, uh, once a week, because I mean, you do this, you know how it is. It's, it's a pain in the butt to put all this stuff together. It's a lot uh, so yeah, nine months now. Yeah. Nine months. And it is a ton of work, 20, 20 plus hours a week making a video easily. So you're, you're kind of doing some behind the scenes to show what goes on when you're capturing, uh, this wildlife photography. Mm-hmm. How has it affected your photography? If it has, because like you said, you're, you're trying to do all this while you're still trying to 
to get the to get the shot. So um, walk me through some some of the challenges you face when you're, yeah, when you're trying you're to gonna, do both. You're gonna make me peel back the curtain here a little bit. <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> so um, so you know, wildlife photography is difficult already, and yeah. and when you decide that you're gonna do videography and you're gonna tell a story about it. Um, so I'll walk you through it. You want to hear the whole 20 plus hour week of how this happens? Yeah. It's, yeah. Let's go. It, it's real simple, man. I mean, first I got to go get the pictures and, um, and I switched from DSLR to mirrorless recently because mirrorless, you can just flip a switch while you're taking pictures and you can get video of, of, you know, the subject. Um, so like this weekend when I finally got on some subjects, you know, Goal number one is get as many pictures as you can. And I'm watching, I'm wait, I'm watching behavior, I'm waiting. And when there's not a lot of cool stuff going on, I'll just take video. I'll flip the switch and I'll take some video. But when I know something's about happening, it goes back to the photo mode and I'm in position. So as far as suffering, I don't think so. I mean, the only thing that I feel like I've suffered on a little bit is I'm on a tripod a lot more now because I want stable video footage. And I used to just run and gun, you know, just throwing that camera around everywhere, but it's hard to get stable footage handheld, you know, but, um, and then after that, you know, it's, it's getting as much B roll as you can. Like, where am I? Uh, you know, you know, the formula in video, right? You get the establishing shot. You try to let people know where you are. You try to zoom in on the location a lot more, and then you try to tell the story about what's actually happening. Um, a lot of that happens after the shots are all over. I go back and I look like a dummy out in the field, just role playing this whole thing and nothing's really going on. Um, but I'm trying to tell the story, right? Because I can't stop, go turn on the camera you know, the other second camera while something amazing is happening right in front of me. So there's a lot of recreation going on. It's Hollywood, uh, except in Idaho. And, <laughs> and then after that, I, I don't know how many of my videos you've watched, but I don't just, I don't vlog. I don't just walk around with a camera and talk you through what I'm doing. I'm telling a story, right? So there's a conflict. There's, you know, me trying to work through this entire conflict, and then I have to come to a resolution at the end. So I have to narrate that. I have to figure out how that all works and how, um, you know, how to tell the story from what's going through my mind, right? I don't want you to be like, okay, here's my camera settings. I'm pointing it at a subject. I'm talking to you about the stress of what's going on and, um, and just trying to paint a beautiful picture. And listen, that, that, once you get all the footage back home, I mean, you're just, you're calling through trying to narrow down all this B roll. So weekend shoot all the footage two sometimes three days, Monday through Wednesday, I'm narrowing everything down by Wednesday. I'm also writing my narrative out. And then it's a mad dash on Friday on Thursday to mash all that together and then post a video on Friday morning. So it's nuts. It's, I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. If you're, if you want to get into YouTube, you better be serious and you better be willing to work because it just takes a lot of time and effort. That's so much work. It, it's just, I mean, I think yeah. a lot of people listening to the podcast realize how much work goes into YouTube videos, but man, that, I mean, yeah. that's just, that, that even blows my mind how much work that's got to be because you're not necessarily going out to film a YouTube video. You're going out to actually do something and you just absolutely are happening to film a YouTube video along the way, but it's also, it's and I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Right. And I have no idea what's going to happen. Um, it lists uh, sometimes a little piece of me is like, man, I'm making this a lot harder on myself than I need than I need it to be. I could just point a camera at myself and tell you, Hey, here I am. I'm going to go take some pictures and, and I could, the editing would be faster. Everything would be faster, but that's just not me, man. I mean, when I was, when I decided to make a YouTube channel, I thought to myself, what can I do that other people aren't doing? And there's a lot of great YouTubers out there. I mean, just, I mean, I've heard a lot of the guys on your show. I've went and visited their channels. They're just like, when it comes to tech, I felt like I can't really compete with a lot of these guys that are really nailing that down. And I just wanted to fill a space that kind of hadn't been filled already. D does that make sense when I say that? Yeah, no, um, it, there it it, definitely it, is. And that's hard to find. Needed somebody. Yeah. yeah. There, there's not, I mean, I can't really think of too many like wildlife photographers that, that do a YouTube channel that, that I watch or that I've come across. Uh, maybe it's just not my like normal genre, but um, yeah, I, I just, I can't really think of anybody other than you. And I think what you're doing is, yeah. is, is really cool when it, when you're, it. you're trying to make quality videos, but what, when you're out doing this, what comes first? Is it the video or is it the photography? Uh, photography first every time. Yeah. I mean it, it, because my videos are nothing without the photography and what I'm, 
the story that I'm telling is the the struggle of getting the shot. Uh, that is the theme of my channel. It's more than just uh, it's more than just gear and technique. It is the struggle of getting out there. So if I'm not showing you what it takes to get the shot, I've defeated the whole purpose of my channel. Uh, you know, I, I went to Yellowstone recently with a couple of friends, and the whole um, theme of that is where where the hell are the bears? Right? I've traveled all this distance to get a shot of the bears. So it's the struggle of trying to find that wildlife. And um, I don't want to ruin the video for you, but it, it wasn't easy, right? So um, so first and foremost, the whole video, the whole channel is about getting the shot. So I've got to get the shot. Every video, I've got to get the shot. So you're planning you're planning your videos, you're planning your shoots. Yeah. You made a, a you made a good point earlier and it was knowing what like you need to understand and know what you're what you're capturing and what you're shooting. So, mm -hmm. you know, a portrait photographer is going to know how to, to draw, you know, the best reactions out of people. So they look best on, on camera. Yeah. Um, a real estate photographer is going to know the best time of day to shoot and, and the light and the angles to get as a wildlife photographer, you need to know the wildlife and the area you're going to go shoot. So what kind of planning do you do before you go out? Like how far in yeah. advance do you plan for a shoot? Um, a year. And, and let me tell you wow. what I mean by that. So I'm, I'm going back a year. Every time I go out, I go back and look at a year ago, what was going on. Um, so this weekend I looked at my footage that I took December last year and it was ducks. And on every one of my pictures, it shows where I took the picture. Um, you know, what time of the day it was and, and what the settings were like outside. So if I don't have that historical data, I'm just walking around blind. Right. So, um, so yeah, it may be that week I'm saying I, I want to go to the park, but I need to know what I'm looking for. So I have to keep good records and most good wildlife photographers, and I'm not saying I'm the best at it or anything, but the ones that really excel at it, they know what to look for and when to look for it. So you can't wing it. You can't just go out there and wing it. Sure you can, and you can get lucky. But for me, I, I have to be strategic and, and I plan far in advance, very far in advance. So I'm a gearhead. I have to ask. Um, yeah. Let's talk about camera gear for a minute, if we can, because I, <laughs> I see the gear. lenses Love behind it. you, and yeah, just yeah. walk me through the Where gear that you're taking out to, yeah. to shoot to shoot uh, yeah. wildlife. So, um, so right now I switched from the Nikon D850 to the Z62. So I've got a couple of those. Um, my Z62 is hooked to a 600 millimeter f4. Um, you know, it's the AFS two version, uh, the non VR. So it's a little bit older. Um, that's 90% of my footage. I also have a little carry around 500 PF, which is a prime lens as well. So all of my bird footage is 500 millimeters and above. Um, and you can look up that gear. It's, you know, it, it's the right stuff to use. So you can, you can get stuff with cheaper gear for sure. I did it for years, but, um, the prime shots come from the big gear. Uh, I just ordered the Z9, so I'm on the list for that to show up. Nikon Z9, I should see that hopefully in the next week or so, uh, if everything works out okay with their shipping. And and then you know the rest of the gear is support gear, right? I've got to have massive tripod. I've got microphones all over the place. You know, the sound is huge in YouTube. You know that. Uh, you mess up the sound and people are out. So I've got um, you know all the best road microphones and Sennheisers all out in the field, taking recordings, uh, collecting all the data on zoom H sixes and, and, uh, it's just nuts. So, um, and then you got to get home and you got to edit it all. So it's the, you know, it's the Adobe premiere pro and just the, the headache that it is going through that stupid program. So it, yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. It's if you're looking to make a lot of money at doing YouTube, you, better know that you're going to spend some money first to get quality footage. And, and I'm learning that uh, every time I think I'm done, there's always something else that's going to make it just a little bit better. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a never yeah. ending battle. There's always going to be something that's yeah. never, there's, it's never enough. <laughs> never. That's right. And I love there's, it. And that's, the, that's the theme of my videos. A lot of times enough is never enough. You know, I've got, I've photographed that bird a hundred times, but I need a better image. And in order to get a better image, I need a better lens in order to get a better lens. I, I mean, it could put a better camera on the back of it. You're right. It just, it, 
doesn't stop. And YouTube doesn't help, right? It used to be you'd pick up a magazine and maybe flip to the back or consumer reports to figure out what was best. Now we got 7,000 knuckleheads on YouTube telling us what they think is the best thing. And, and it's just coming at you from every direction. But I love it, man. I mean, I love talking gear. I love owning the nice stuff. And Too it helps options. to have good equipment. Too yeah, many options. But they're all great. They are. They're all great, man. So I good. can't wait to see so how you like the, the Z9, man. That looks like a, a fantastic camera. I, I, I shoot, yeah. you know, my real estate stuff on on uh, on a Z6. And when I'm doing event yeah. stuff, event photography, I'm doing, you know, I got a Z6 on one side and a Z7 mm-hmm. on the other. Absolutely love great. Nikon for, yeah. for photos. Uh, great yeah. cameras. The best, best straight out of camera images. And I've used them all. Uh, Sony best autofocus for sure, you know, electronics, all that stuff. Canon, there's just something about their colors I love. Uh, but man, when you're talking straight out of camera, the way an image looks out of an icon is just, uh, it's, I don't know. It's like the Cadillac of cameras. I don't know. It's just, it's fancy. It's just a fancy feel to it, but I, I love, love it. it. I, I'll never switch. Yeah. Uh, and you have to love being, you know, a mirrorless shooter now. I, I, I was shooting on oh, a D850 for so a long time too. And when I got rid of it, I went to my Z6 and my Z7 and um, being able to actually like the EVF, is su- it's just such a game changer to be able to see your, ah, your exposure changes yeah. in real time. It's just, it's so, so awesome. I don't know how Absolutely. we went by with like how we got by without that now. You had to be good. You had to know what you're doing. You, know, yeah. I mean, you, you had to learn how to read your meters and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, an, an example of that, just this weekend, I went out to a spot and you know, my whole goal was to get some backlit shots of these waterfowl. And, um, it used to be, I would guess, you know, I'd take three and four shots and just underexpose and then change the exposure compensation. And now, I mean, I'm, I turn the dial and it shows me exactly what it's going to look like when I take the shot. I, it's, it's almost like cheating. I mean, I don't want to say that it's, uh, it's, you still got to get up early. You still got to find the subjects. You still got to put in the time, but man, now the equipment makes it so easy. Uh, to get a good shot. And I love it. I absolutely yeah. love it. Just, it, it still work, right? It still work. Like before, you know, when yeah. you're shooting on a D850, yep. you, you just gotta, you gotta know your editing style. You gotta know, like, if you want a backlit shot, how to read your meters and how guesstimate how underexposed you need to be to get the shot that yeah. that you want. But now just yeah. being able to see like, oh, huh, there, there it is. That works. <laughs> yeah, is absolutely, it's so absolutely nice, amazing. It's so nice. Uh, yeah. What I love about photography, especially like my favorite type of photography, which I don't get to do all the time, which is um, landscape photography. I love going on trips. I love going up to Yosemite and just taking shots. I just, it's absolutely beautiful. Don't get to do it all the time, but I love it. But what I love about photography and especially when you print it out is you see the photo and what makes me think of this is I'm looking at, at photos like on the other side of the camera right here of, of Yosemite. They, they capture a moment and you can recall that moment and exactly what was going on. And and then it makes you think of the whole day and like what, what happened leading up to that photo. And after that photo, is there a specific photo for you that kind of stands out that just brings back this memory of like, Oh, that, that was the shot I wanted. That, that is the, yeah. is there a favorite picture and a favorite moment looking through all your back catalog? Yeah. You know, favorite's a subjective word, right? Because, um, sometimes <laughs> favorite I, I in quality some... or favorite in moment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, yeah. Sometimes some moments I wish I'd have did, I would have done a lot better at paying attention, right. To my technical gotcha. yeah. uh, capabilities. And it was an awesome experience, but you know, I, I say this, you know, on occasion that there's really four or five images a year at best that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of. Right. And I don't, enter contests. I don't, I don't get any awards for any of these things. You know, I'll post it on Instagram and, and a lot of times it might not even be my most liked image. Um, but inside I'm like, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. That was special. Right. And, um, so I'm always looking for top five moments every year and they kind of fluctuate, but, but I've, I've kind of pride myself on the absolute, um, mundane, moments in wildlife that a lot of people just walk by. Right. And I've got a video about that where, you know, there's just so many people that miss so much in life. And just this weekend at, no, this was goodness, uh, a couple of two or three weekends ago, there were some sparrows that were just feeding on some bushes. And it occurred to me, like, I'm, I'm the only one witnessing this right now. Right. And I'm getting all the video footage and it was just something magical about the fact that I was capturing it in such a artistic way 
that I, I had time to play with, you know, the, the composition and foreground. And for me, I get just a nerd out about that stuff. And then on the flip side, you know, like last year, this time or a little later than this, those great gray owls showed up in the, in the valley and me and every other photographer in town was out in the woods photographing these great gray owls. Yeah. Awesome experience. But I've got all these photographers around me. It's like, I'm trying to take a picture and I got three other cameras on my shoulder from other people. So for me, it's about those quiet little moments where it's just me, you know, where I, where I'm by myself and I'm witnessing something that I know, you know, if I wasn't here, it would be happening anyway, but I'm capturing it. Right. I, my, as a matter here, let me sum it up for you. Um, I've got a picture hanging above our fireplace, no, above the TV, and it's two cedar wax wings, a very common bird, and it's the biggest image in my house, um, and it's where the male was feeding the female a Russian olive, right? He was just like their courting ritual, mm -hmm. and I got that image through some, you know, some limbs and some foreground, and it looks all magical, and yeah, I mean, that stuff happens every day, but it was just a magical little moment. So no is the answer, but yes, every day. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, I'm always looking for little moments like that. That's awesome. I mean, that's what I love about photography is capturing those little moments yeah. and, and just the memories they bring back when you, when you look at them. But you brought out a good point again, and I totally agree with you at the fact that, you know, when you look through all your pictures and you get a bunch of good pictures, but to you, yeah. like, yeah, there's only like five that stick out out of the, the yeah, whole year, yeah. right? And I, I totally agree. You snap tons of photos, but not as good as they are, there's only like, you know, a yeah. handful that really stick out the entire year, at least for me as well. Like I, I totally agree with yeah. that. Um, and that's if I'm lucky. I mean, there's some years where it's two, you know, some years where it's one and, and you, it, it, what's, you know, this, I mean, you're on Instagram. I've seen a lot of your stuff, but there's so many good photographers out there. They, yeah. I mean, it, it's so saturated and I'm telling you, you can scroll through your photography feed every day and you can see award-winning stuff that would just blow your mind. I mean, and I think to myself, man, if I could just ever get that shot, man, I wonder what he had to do. To get, and, and every, every time I scroll, it's like, wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, but that's where YouTube comes into me, right? I mean, there's, there might be 7,000 pictures I see a day but none of them really tell me the full story of what it took to get that image and what it took to edit that image. And you get on YouTube and I mean, like you said, I'm the only wildlife guy, you know, and there's maybe seven or eight of us that are kind of, you know, in that certain tier, but man, the story to me matters most. That's what I'm going to remember. I mean, yeah. you're, when you see that picture on Instagram, you don't know what I went through. No. And to me, that's the special part, right? That is the, that's the magic is what it takes to get into those positions. Yeah. You see, you see a split second, right? And not everything yeah. that went, that led into that and like what it took to get that shot. <laughs> right. For all we know, you tried to get that shot for like three years, you know, <laughs> not yeah. necessarily. And, and there's many a shots that like that. that your whole lifetime, your whole lifetime. Yeah. I, there's a guy I photograph with and he, he just started and he's fantastic. I mean, he just, I can't believe how quick he just, he got good and he makes comments to me all the time. It's like, man, if I could just do this, if I could just do that. And I tell him, man, it's a lifelong hobby. I said, you just got a picture that I waited my whole life for to get, you just happen to be here with me right now. And we got to experience it together. Right. And that is the beautiful thing about photography. You can work your entire life, uh, for that special moment and then it happens and it's over. Right. And if you don't have a way to, to tell that story to people, um, it's just a picture on your wall. Right. And it's just your memory. Yep. So that that's why YouTube has been so special to me. It's my journal. It's my diary into what it takes to get it. Well, anybody listening definitely needs to go check it out, especially if they have any passion for photography. Uh, Josh's <laughs> channel is just you're going to love what you're going to love watching it. So um, to kind of wrap things up, I, I have one more question for you. I was kind of thinking, yeah, about, sure. um, you know, when we snap a picture and we look at it in our camera, mm -hmm we get an idea of what it felt like to be there and capture that picture. And when we, we get home or, or wherever we're at and we put it on the computer, we see that, but the image itself necessarily doesn't capture everything. It felt like being there. It's a beautiful picture, but it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't capture everything, all, all the emotions and the feeling that you felt when you snapped that picture. So w walk me through your editing process because a lot of editing, um, 
you know, I was just mentioning this to my wife last night. I went out and got some like night drone footage and uh, you see it and it looks That's good, difficult. But, yeah. but you got to take, you got to, there's some editing that needs to happen because yeah. even though that's what it looked like, our brains tell us, well, it, actually it should look a little slightly different. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it was dark, but eh, it should be a little bit brighter yeah. so you can see everything. Our brains kind of play tricks on us when we look at something and how it is and how we think it should be. So I guess the question I'm asking is, you know, what kind of editing do you do to your photos to really just round them out to capture that full moment? Yeah. So I, I, when I snap the picture in my mind, I already know what I want it to look like. And I know that sounds a little, I mean, that's just years of experience, right? You've, you've snapped the, you pulled the trigger so many times you've opened that shutter so many times and you've sat through the whole editing process for hours and hours. If you don't kind of have that foresight at the beginning, you're going to struggle, you know, on the backside. Um, so yeah, I try to get it as right as I can in camera to start with. And I know that that's the catch all phrase, but intention is what you have to be thinking about. What is my intention with this image? And for me, my intention is to make you feel like you were there with me. So I'm not going to over dodge something or overburn something or, or get too crazy with, uh, with artsy stuff. I just want you to feel like you were looking through that lens when I, when I took the shot. So when I get home, I've got five or six presets that I've developed over the last seven or eight years, uh, since I've gotten halfway decent at Lightroom, I try one of those five presets on it and that's my baseline. And then what I do is I try to just, I try to just make you get, fall into the image. Right. And I know that's, that sounds cliche and it sounds catchy, but, um, I don't want there to be anything that distracts you from, from the moment. Does that make sense when I say that? I, Absolutely. I, yeah. I think, I think a lot of people, they, they add all this stuff and it's amazing. I wish I had that type of talent to, to really, um, I don't want to say over edit, but, but Uber edit, right. They, they get down into the science of it. And then when you look at it, you're like, wow, that's an amazing edit. I don't want people to think that I want people to think that they were there with me and that's it. I don't want them to get distracted by the edit. I don't want them to get distracted by, and sometimes that means I got to edit some things out because I don't want them to be distracted by the solar flare that, you know what I'm saying? It, so there's so there's a balance to it. That's my intention. And, and I totally admire the people that go the other direction, uh, maybe because I don't know how to do it. I don't do it so much, but, um, it's just intention, Jared. You know, you, you, you got to be thoughtful and the more you do it, the more thoughtful you get and the better your images get. It's just that yeah. simple. I mean, snapping the photo is only half the art form. The other half comes, comes to editing, yeah. right? Really to get your, I'd almost say, I'd almost across. say 30%. Yeah, yeah. I think 70% is editing because I look back on some of my old images and I got some great shots and I ruined it with editing. I don't know if you've done that in the past, Absolutely. but I, mean, I, of <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing and I go back and I look at it. I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? You know? And, um, so yeah, I mean it, so that's why I weigh it a little more. You, if you don't get your post-processing right, you can ruin a great outing. You can absolutely ruin it. Um, so I agree, man. I mean, getting out there, getting the images is, is an amazing part of it, but you've got to figure out that post-processing yep. and Lightroom, you know, Lightroom, Photoshop, you got to learn, you got to learn the tools. Yeah. Got to learn them. They've gotten fantastic, but you still got to learn how to yeah. use them properly. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I struggle with it every day. Learn a little bit every day. Yeah. Well, Josh, it's been great having you on the show. I mean, we could talk forever and I could ask a ton of questions because <laughs> I absolutely love wildlife <laughs> photography. Um, but for uh, anybody who wants it, to follow along on your journey, learn more about yeah. wildlife photography and what it takes to capture the images you're capturing, uh, what are the, where are the best places for them to follow along? Yeah. Come on over to YouTube, go to Bayou Josh, uh, Bayou, like down on the Bayou, B-A-Y-O-U. And, uh, if you want to see what the images look like, I don't post there as much anymore. I probably two or three images a week. Um, but Instagram it's Bayou underscore Josh. And people always ask me, where does the Bayou come from? I grew up in Louisiana. I'm a Louisiana boy at heart. And, um, I moved up here to Idaho about four years ago. Uh, so it's a Southern boy experience in the rest of the world. And, uh, so come along over, visit Bayou Josh on YouTube. I appreciate it, Jared. Yeah, of course. It's all yeah. great stuff. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. 
all of Josh's stuff will be linked down in the show notes or the description of the video. Really, I like, I really suggest you go check it out because his work is amazing. I mean, who doesn't look, who doesn't like a good image of a beautiful bird and some wildlife? I mean, it's just, it's good stuff. So go check it out. I'll link below. As always, I appreciate you guys listening each and every week. It means so much to me. I appreciate your support and I'll talk to you guys next week.